talk about all the stuff as we go through. So stand back so you can actually yep. see. Oh, not too far, but yeah, you can just see what we got. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, this looks about right. So, can you, so long as you can see the board and what's yep. going on. Yeah. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is on the check sheet here, we've got, it starts off with the main earthing conductor and the main bonding conductor. Bonding conductors, like over here are the tap, don't have an active and neutral running with it. All right, so it's an important we establish that the earth and the main earth, so the earth denny. Now, this one is running a underground pit. Some of them run an overhead. So, for example, over here, we've got an overhead aerial. So it'll either be one or the other, but it doesn't really matter. It's still the same thing. We have our main earthing conductor down here on the earth electrode. We must test to the earth electrode, not to the earth clip, because that could have a high resistance. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, check my meter, do a battery check, that's okay. All right, then I'll go to three ohms. I'll short the leads together. Make sure it reads zero. If I have to adjust it, we use this area here. We don't use this one down here. This is our adjustment zero here. Why would I have to adjust it? Because what happens is I could have a 20 meter trailing lead running out and we need to zero out the lead resistance. Does that make sense? So. Don't think you're just doing it for a short lead like this. You could have a 20 metre lead running down the road around the house doing stuff and you need to zero out the metre, all right? The leads, I should say. So I've done that. It's reading zero, happy with that. So I'm gonna leave it on three ohms. I'm now gonna swap this. You've got a clamp at the other end. I'll put that on the main earth. I don't need to disconnect the MEN at the moment because we're not doing testing of insulation. Do you understand what I'm getting at? We're just checking continuity of earth, so that goes from A to B. So I'm going to come down to here, put on the earth stake. I'll have a quick look what I've got down here. And it's coming up, and it's more than what we call half an ohm. Okay, it's on the three ohm scale, so it's probably reading close to two and a half. That's definitely a fail. All right. Where do I find the half an ohm? Section 0.82, verification and stuff like that. It's got a flow diagram in there too. It says main earth, sub earth, all that stuff. You can follow it through and all that stuff. So we have, we're going to do that one. That fails. I would write that result down here on my sheet. Pass or fail. So write the result. Pass or fail. They're not asking for a reason why it's high. They just want to know the result. The next one we're going to do, we do here. We check the bonding conductor. That's reading nearly zero. So there's very little result there. Sorry, no 0.5 or yeah. it's well under that. So it's not zero. We know that passes. So the bonding conductor is doing its job. The main earth has a high resistance, so that's going to be a problem. All right? So we've done those two. We've done bonding, uh, main earth conductor, bonding conductor. It now asks about the uh, insulation resistance for the whole installation. I just want to miss that for the moment, and we'll come back, because I don't want to swap from ohms to 500 back and forth all the time. If we go down to the next one, it's asking insulation resistance of an appliance, which is this item here. We'll come back to that as well. We're going to go to the last section, one, one last thing on the page that says resistance of protective earthing conductors. So what we're doing is we're going to measure the resistance of the earth from the earth bar, all right, to the fluorescent, so up here, from the earth bar to the fluorescent, to the earth points on all my sockets and that. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the resistance to the active, go to 8.2, find out what, the, what we call the fault loop impedance, because fault loop impedance is from the active or the circuit breaker load side, the end of my PowerPoint. So they've already given us the active, if you see on that last list. We're then gonna go, all right, we need to get the earth resistance. So we're gonna go from the earth pin back to the earth bar and then write down that value. We add the two together. So say for example, it adds up to 1.4 and the book says table 8.2 for a C breaker, says table 8 point, uh, sorry, 1.6. It said, okay, if it was more than 1.6, it would be then a fail. Does that make sense? So now I'm going to go from here, all right? Well, so what's the first thing it's asking for? Ceiling rows, right? I'm going to go to ceiling rows, earth, have a look, that in here. All right, that's reading zero. So I'd probably put down close to 0.1, but it's actually reading close to zero. All right, I've done that one. What's the next one? Fluorescent, I'll go to that. That's reading zero as well. Then the next one is socket outlet one, two, and three. So I'll work my way through there with the earth pin. And we work our way through. Once we've got all our values, we then go to the book as our reference material. Do you understand what I'm getting at? Table 8.2, add the two together, see if they pass or fail. Are we all happy with that test? All good. 
The next one we're going to do is go to the whole installation now. So I'm now going to select 500 volts. 500 volts is twice the pressure of DC. Sorry, DC is twice the pressure of AC, so it's 230 volts AC. We're now going to go to 500 volts. All right. I've set down my 500 volts. I need to disconnect the MEN link now because we're going to test the whole installation. I'm just going to touch that on the earth there to see if it goes back to zero. Perfect. I know my it's reading zero. I don't need, and you can't calibrate it on um, on mega ohms anyway because it's 500 volts. The zero adjustment doesn't do anything with the zeroing part. All right, it only does it on ohms. Okay, I'm going to leave that just unlocked for a minute. I want to now come back and do the whole installation. We need to cross out. We need to bridge this out. Why? Because our amp meter line coming in or low, our amp meter part for our kilowatt hour meter, the current will go through this loop, through here, and the voltage difference will be across these two here. Do you understand what I'm getting at? P equals V times I. This is the V part. This is the amp I part. All right? Add them two together, we get a power meter, and that's what we have to do. So I'm going to put this across here. Because doing the whole installation includes the pick cables. The pick cables from here to here, and it also includes going back to the main switchboard. It's easier to do it here than trying to crawl on my belly in the buddy pit or an aerial climbing up on a ladder. So we do it at the switchboard part. I'm now going to loop the neutral, all right, to the active. And now is my active and neutral at the same potential. I didn't have to join the active, the neutral, because underneath here on the neutral link, the neutral comes up, goes to here. From here it goes straight to the neutral bar. All right, there's no separation point. This is the only point on the active that has a separation point. I'm now going to make sure that all my breakers are in the on position, all turned on. My light switches, which are over here, sorry, they're all in the on position. I can turn around and say all my power points turned on, but I don't have appliances turned in plugged into them. Do you understand what I'm getting at? So I don't need to really have that. You can or you can't. It doesn't matter. It's not going to make a difference on the reading. All right. Um, the only thing I wanted to make sure of is that my socket, uh, my heating sheathed element was disconnected. We don't want to have things like that because that could give you a low reading. All right. So everything's all turned on. We've got it done. I'm going to punch it to 500 volts. My MEN is disconnected. I now have my neutral lead on my earth. We're going to go to the top of the main switch and. The installation is reading OK. If I go to Earth, helps if I push the button in. That makes a big difference. <laughs> Let's go to the top of the main switch now. It's gone down to half a mega ohm. Is that a pass or a fail? Yeah. One mega ohm's a minimum, so <coughs> it's a fail. OK? So we know that now that the whole installation fails. We'll come down here, whole installation. All right? We go fail, minimum reading 0.5. We'll do that, okay. So now what I'm going to do is turn off the main switch. It says final sub-circuit number one. I'm going to turn all these off so that we separate all the circuits on the final sub-circuit. All we're doing is the load output going out. Does that make sense? So now I'm going to go through and check to see where my low reading come from. I'm going to go on here. That says, um, okay. Okay, so I'll just check the earth again, make sure it reads zero, that's all right. So that, the hot plate's okay. The lighting is down on the white, um, red phase, sorry, the red, uh, active. But if I go to the neutral, it's still down, same reading. So we've got a problem on the lighting circuit, number two. If we have a look down here, so number two, we have a, we would put in there, fail. Go to number three. All okay, all okay. So in this whole installation, number two, the lighting circuit fails. The low one mega. All right. Another thing I can do, if I turn on the circuit breaker, see how it's reading infinity? I turn on this one. Perfect. I'll turn on number three. No problem. Number four. The problem gets introduced when I bring in number two. Turn it off. Does the same thing, so it's identified the lighting circuit is the problem. It could also be across two breakers too. Don't so on some of the other boards we've had where we've had a problem on the active but nothing on the neutral side. Do you understand what I'm getting at? 
Then another breaker, we've had a problem on the neutral and on so, and sorry, the active side and not the neutral side. All right. So they can, they might not be just on both sides. Sometimes it can just be on the active or the neutral side as well. All right, we've done all that. Tested the whole insulation. We're now going to do insulation resistor. I'll check the um, heating element here. We now have an appliance. You need to make sure that the unit is turned on, not off. So that's minimum, maximum. We're going to put it on to maximum. The first thing I need to check, all right, you take it off. Take it back to three ohms. We're now going to check the earth or the continuity of the earth to the frame. Everybody understand that? Now he's checking appliance for insulation resistance if I haven't checked to make sure the frame is tied to the earth or the pin. Because when we do the test, you really, yeah, it could be a lot, you've got a live frame. So I'm going to hook up to the earth pin. We're now going to go to the frame. It reads zero. What's that telling me? I've got continuity of earth. All right. I'm now going to go to come up, turn it to 500 volts. I'll just um, test it to earth again. That goes back down to earth. It's telling me that we're working. I'm now going to pick up this, go to the active, and what's it reading? Which I can't look up at. Is it below one mega? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Any problem having a short read? No, it's above one mega. Hang on. Yep, it's above one meg. Yep, that's all right. The problem you've got to be careful on these, this earth bin hasn't got it, but see the active pins have got plastic on them? Yep. All right, you're not touching to the plastic. All right, the appliance is tested okay. That's all good. Are we all happy with that? Yes? All right, the next thing we're going to do, we've done all the front page. We'll take that up to 500 volts so I don't give myself a tickle. We'll turn the page over. We have continuity of mains. All right. Continuity of mains means we want to check from the active to this point here that that's active active and I want to check from the neutral to the neutral bar. I only got to go to three ohms. I'll go to the neutral bar first. Put my clamp on. Test the neutral here. And I get nothing. I'm just going to double check, put that onto there. Again, I keep, I keep turning the button on, and some people leave it on all the time, but it's a good habit to make sure you turn the button off. All right? But that's still not working. Nope. Double check here. That's going back to zero. Yep, that is going. So we have the neutrals working to neutral. I'll now go to down here, put the clamp on the main active. I'm going to take the neutral off here. All right. Make sure active to active is going. And we get nothing. All right. I still have the active joined. Do you understand what I'm getting at? So the active is an open circuit. So from the pit to here, if I want to just double check, I'll short that out there. I could join here. So from the pit to here, there's an open circuit. What do you do in a real life application when you can't test the book between the top of the board, the breaker, and the fit? Like, how do you do that? Do you run, you a, run a running lead out. You do run a running lead Yep, that's what we were saying about zero and zero before. Yeah. That you have to run a training lead out. That's what you call a training lead on an earth wire. All right, so we've got the actives knackered. The earth, or sorry, the neutral is okay. Do we all agree? All right. The next thing we're going to do is. Um, the making sure the operation of the switches is working all okay. So what I'm going to do now is we're still going three ohms. We're going to check to see if the ceiling rays fluorescent. I'll do socket outlet number one. I'm going to go to the top of the breaker. It says um, power. I'll go actually. I'll change this around to a probe now. Back to a probe. We don't need a clamp. So I'm going to test between. And what I'm going to do is take the socket outlet. It says socket outlet number one. I put my pin in there, I come up to here, and if I switch me switch on, see how the switch is moving? Alright, the switch moves, that identifies it's in the active position. Do you understand what I'm getting at? 
If it didn't switch, I'd come across to the neutral, and if I switched that on and off and it moved, that means it would be switching in the neutral position. I'm in the active position, closest to the switch, and I've put it in the active position of the power circuit, because it says there, and the switch is activated. I'll try it on socket outlet number, the next one, number two. All right, come across here. I tend to move these out because they're a little bit easier to plug the lead into. Come up to number two, turn this on, it's doing the same thing. So we do that all the way through. Same when we do the fluoro though, or the ceiling rose, we pick up the active conductor, which is over here. I'm now gonna take, um, this across to the light. Can somebody hold that for us please? Just hold that. And if I turn the, the ceiling rose on, that's not moving. Double checking my active down there, sorry. Yep. So it didn't move. That's working. Yep, that's right. But it's not switching, the switch is not hooked up. In other words, it's got a direct feed. Does that make sense? So there's no switch to it. All right. So they're the things we need to look for. We do those right through. It's either active, neutral, or neither. Neither means it could be open circuit, if you want to write that, or direct circuit. No switch. The last two we got on there, testing circuit for automatic disconnection and supply, is fault loop impedance. All right? So for that, we need to get this plug. Thank you. We need to put a jumper between the active pin to the neutral, to the earth, sorry. And the first one it's asking for is appliance socket outlet, so appliance socket outlets down here. I've now joined the power from here, down to the active, through to the earth, the earth back to the earth bar. We're now gonna measure the active and the earth together. Remember the first table we did where we already had the active value given to us, yes? Remember on the other side of the page, we all measured the, all the earths and we had to add them together? Well, what we're doing is we're just gonna measure them together already. They already gave us the active value. So we're gonna join the two together. So I'll swap this over to a power lead, put that into there. I'm now gonna go and measure between the appliance socket, I think it'll be this one. Turn the hot plate off. Actually leave them all off because we only want to go to the output. We're getting short of number two. And oh, no. that's turned on. Just bear with me for a second. I just want to make sure the earth pin is earth. That's going to earth. Active. So have we got an active wire coming up to here? So that means the appliance socket is an open circuit. And oh, there we are, hot plate, there we go. So that means we measure that resistance there. All right, appliance, I forgot the hot plate, yeah, it's been marked hot plate. So that's working okay. So we can measure the resistance. So that we've measured the resistance back down to the active factor through here, and that gives us our value. We do the same on socket number four. We put the socket in there, join the plug through from um, earth to active and then you'll measure them between the active here to earth and you would get a reading. All right, so I could actually take, make sure the switch is turned on too, actually, because that's the other thing I didn't say. So socket outlet number four. I've got to get in and out. So I turn that switch on, I come here, do number socket number four, and it should, yep, here it's coming up. So now this is reading 1.5, 1.3 ohms that we need to write down. Then go to our book and compare values to see if it's right. Remember how we go to table 8.2, look at the size of the circuit breaker, all that go through. So this is a 16 amp breaker, whatever, type C, and then we make our notes. Is there any other questions? No, all happy? All right, have a practice, work together. There's nothing about who's the quickest here, it's going through step by step making sure we understand how the circuits and all that work and how the sub, how the process works, all right? We went through, identified all our earths, made sure all our earths, and that's why I did the earths first too, to make sure that we had earthing points back from here to our power points. Do you understand what I'm getting at? 
Once we did those, then I went and did the whole insulation and had a look through from that point. We did the appliance next, and then we did the um, switching on the active possessions. We also did making sure the mains are, are, um, are, are polarity, that in other words, they're continuous. We found that the active is an open circuit. It's not, it's not going right through, so that would be another problem. All right? All right, we'll leave it at that. Have a crack at it and see how you go.